Hello everyone. Today's topic is a design scenario featuring a maxillary Kennedy class 2 arch. Let's describe our clinical findings. In terms of occlusion, the patient is an angle class 3 with end-to-end -end occlusion. The periodontal condition is good with the exception of number 4 and 5 which have a guarded prognosis. The oral hygiene has improved and periodontal referral has been accomplished. There is a frenal attachment which could interfere with placement of a bar type clasp on number 11. The patient is aesthetic conscious but has limited funds. As always we begin with a thorough medical history and carefully articulated diagnostic casts. We've evaluated interarch space and decided that we have sufficient room to place artificial teeth using an acrylic base. Has the patient ever worn a partial denture? The patient has not had any previous partial dentures. There are several treatment approaches here, but treatment with the removable partial denture seems a logical first choice, since it is very conservative and affordable. Implants may still be considered at a later time, if the patient so chooses. Which teeth are we gonna replace? It depends on which mandibular teeth are present. If the patient desires to replace number 15, so be it, even if the tooth is unopposed. I would discourage replacing number 2, and certainly not the third molars if at all possible. Okay, when do we survey the diagnostic cast? First, we'll place our maxillary diagnostic cast on the survey table with the occlusal plane level to the table. Then we'll use our analyzing rod to examine the cast for potential guiding planes. Locate and measure areas suitable for retention. Locate interferences to the path of insertion. Determine areas of recontouring and determine the most favorable path of placement. After we do all this, we'll mark our heights of contour and tripod our cast. Of course we should not neglect to examine for aesthetics, especially dark triangles and clasp location. We'll look at our carefully mounted and verified casts to examine the occlusion. We very much prefer to avoid placing components in areas of habitual occlusal closure. The patient does not appear to have a retrude mandibular position that varies from her habitual closure or MIP. What's next? Let's design a partial starting with guide plane placement. Definitely a short guide plane on the distal of number 11, being careful not to over-prepare the tooth. Then long guide planes on the lingual axial wall of the bicuspids and molars, as shown in the diagram. Next we want to place rest seats. We'll consider potential fulcrum lines and clasp types here. Let's use the double occlusal rest seat on the mesial of the molar and distal of the bicuspid. We'll extend the rest on the bicuspid to provide some stabilization. We'll also rest the first bicuspid with an extended occlusal rest to provide resistance to lateral movement of this periodontally weakened tooth. A cingulum rest is placed on the lingual of number 6 and 11. That puts our fulcrum line, as shown in the illustration. Now, we are ready to join these components across the arch with a palatal plate major connector. The connector is extended, so that the base will cover the tuberosity. Draw the bead line on the cast. Okay. I think we measured the interarch space and decided we had enough room for an acrylic base with acrylic teeth. So let's draw the ladder base retention. Good. That's right. Be sure to include the tissue stop. Alright, time to consider clasping. Our surveying determined that the molar has 0.01 inch undercut on the distal buckle, perfect for a cast one half round direct retainer. We have known that the patient was aesthetic conscious, but could not afford an attachment on number 11. We have two options. One option is to place an abbreviated cast circumferential clasp on the distal one half of the tooth, or use a modified T with 0.01 inch distal undercut. I prefer the modified T, because it resists rotational displacement of the partial denture, it is reasonably aesthetic and the clasping adjacent to the edentulous space is inherently more efficient. We'll get our periodontist, world-renowned Dr. Stick Figure, to treat the frenal attachment. 
Let's draw those clasps. Okay, now what? Hum, I think the indirect retainer. Yes, that's right. Look at the fulcrum line once again. Indirect retention is provided by the rests on 4, 5, and 6. Also the partial can be easily repaired if these bicuspids fail. In both cases the retentive element engages the tooth posterior to the fulcrum line. That means there's less stress on the abutments, because the clasp disengages when the patient bites down. You know, some operators would plate the anterior teeth to provide more indirect retention and lateral stability to the partial. There's nothing wrong with plating the anterior region. Personally I prefer to avoid invading the tongue space. One problem with partial dentures of this type is the tendency to rock about the fulcrum. I think that this could become more noticeable to the patient as well as increase the potential for phonetic problems. But certainly, at the discretion of the operator. The plate can be interrupted to avoid showing through any proximal spaces. Okay, wrapping up this segment, I'm Dr. Marie Huggy with World Famous Theatre, thanking you for joining us. For the interested viewer, other videos are available.